Welcome back to Pole Van Garage, where we will be working on the van yet again. I've got some stuff I cannot wait to show you for this thing. Slot mags, air shocks, Cal Custom murals for the side. Yeah, things are going to be looking pretty cool around here. What I've got is 15 by 10 US mag slots, heavily reversed, big dish mags. On the front we got 15 by 8s, and with the 25570, 15 in the front, and then a 295.50 in the back, because that's pretty much the only wide tire you can get these days. So, a little taller in the front, but I think it'll work out okay. Because I also picked up a set of Gabriel hijackers to put in it too. Get that ass end up. I know, I know, modern car culture and your LS swaps and your big wheels and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Vans that look like this made a lot of babies, all right? That's tremendous. <laughs> when you buy wheels and tires, it's kind of a guessing game. You never really know for sure until you get them on the truck. Yeah. Now I am going to put some exhaust tips on it while I got her up in the air here. Yeah, just get rid of these rusty ones. And uh, pretty much that means I'm going to shoot these on the self-tappers because I ordered the wrong size. And if you expected more, you're in the wrong place. Get the old crusty one off of here. I like it. We gotta lose the running boards. We gotta add some fender flares. Tips look pretty good, huh? Not bad for complete half-assery. Fronts are about right. Definitely needs the air shocks on the back to level it out now. Pull it outside to get a better look at it. Pretty good. Just needs to a little bit. Oh, I need to add one major modification to the van. Yes! <laughs> Let's do it. I think we need to pull these, if we just pull the top two grill bolts out, I think we can swing the grill down. It's kind of hard to get to these bolts. This is not going to be fun to put back in, but it'll be worth it. That. I don't know, I think that's... I like it across from each other. Alright, so let's get them loosely started here. Hauling ass in no time. Yeah, I like that. I may move them around later. I, I kind of like them offset, but... We'll roll with this for now. See, you know, gotta kind of let it burn in a little bit. Come over your dad's. He found these Cal Custom stick-on murals on eBay. We got this one going right now. I got a few even came with a squeegee. They're dated from 1975, so, you know, we'll let them sit out in the sun a little bit. Get sticky again, flexible. Gonna have to scuff up this side. He's got some pretty serious lacquer checking going on, so we'll scuff all that up and try to get it to stick. It's probably not gonna work, but we'll see. It's trying to get it centered in the door, and the door will be a little bit easier. It should be literally here. I'm gonna knock off all the lacquer checking here. Try to get a smooth surface for us. It's just where they've sprayed this cheap Earl Scheib crap over the original custom paint. Oh, this one's a 76. Oh, well, yeah, it's only two years older than the van, so. <laughs> I don't think it be any right here. No. Indeed. I just got a big air bubble. There we go, working up toward the top. There you go. Voila. Yeah, you can see like there's a hundred little oh, ones. Yeah. And then the sun will get involved in that too after a while. That's cutting out around the edge. You're supposed to cut around. It's kind of got a a mark in it where you cut, but you can call and go to JC Whitney in the catalog and get yourself a cow custom mural to make yourself a custom van for 28 bucks. Yeah, I mean, crazy, they're still in that good of shape, too. Oh, it's just incredible. It just it's stuck right on there, it's yeah. fine. It looks like it's been on there for 50 years. They had these extensions that made nice wings for the hood and covered up all the bad paint. JD's popping bubbles there, the hood's done, and we got one more to do. Oh, yeah. What do you think, buddy? Perfect. Pretty 70s, isn't it? Yes. That is how vans looked back then. Now, what I think I will do, what I think I will do, I'm going to go get some dark blue and fog these edges in. It'll also kind of help hold down the edges of this, just in case, but I'll just fog around it, you know, like it was airbrushed. Yeah. yeah we'll fake it. Fake it till you make it. That's what you did in the 70s. People... People think everything was perfect. It uh, it mostly was not. Back on the van, I got a few things I'd like to knock out. We got a little car show to go to tomorrow. It might be kind of fun. Figure we'll take this. I'm gonna mask off the mural 
and then try to fog in around it with this blue metallic paint. Look at that steering wheel I picked up. That's going to be great. Got some door edge molding. Got that door edge molding to put back on here on both doors. Oh boy, this is going to be a process. Which I bought some more paint to put down a darker blue base and then we'll cover it with that. Just a little dark blue fog the metallic over. I know, you think I'm crazy. Just just give me a second, all right? Ended up masking it all off anyway. It scares me a little bit. It's hard for me to hold that plexiglass. Key here is to make it look like it's airbrushed on. While we wait for that to dry, let's get our new Moon Eyes wheel put on here. Some of you are no doubt wondering, why is it purple, Dalton? You're an idiot. Uh, a new one is over $230. I got that on eBay for $72 with the adapter and the collar and everything. Close enough. <laughs> well, the horn is kind of sad. Get my steering wheel puller out, which is not a steering wheel puller, it's a harmonic balancer puller installer. Just like a steering wheel puller will work to remove a harmonic balancer, a harmonic balancer puller will work to remove a steering wheel. It just won't do it very good. Aha! Uh -huh. Then throw this in a dumpster. Ugh. I don't know what that adapter was for. Not this. Grant wheels. I'll take a special three bolt adapter, kind of like this. Uh, this is a Speedway one that I robbed from the Silver Dollar Chevy because I have a cool wheel for it. But well, you know, this is just more of a priority right this second. I have no idea how the horn goes together in this. This is different. Not going to have one of those. We have air horns. We don't need that. Speaking of which, I need to fix this. The wheels looked pretty straight on it. Of course, I didn't do any of this correctly. But what do you expect? Tighten the 30 foot-pound. Ah, oh, that's convenient. Let's fix that. Fix this forever. Ah. Ah, yes. Yep, that's it. Ah, fixed! The purple looks right at home in there, actually. That is perfect. See what I can do here. Now let's see if I hate this. Kinda hate it. Fuck. In an attempt to fix this, I'm using some SOS pads here. And scrubbing off the excess and try to give it like a worn in look, you know, kind of like the fake patina look. Oh, give me a second here. I think I'm on to something. Oh, hell yeah. This arm is too short. I can't roll the door back all the way. It hits the tire now with our big fat meats. I got a longer arm, and uh, we have to change out this mechanism here, and it'll kick the door out further, thus allowing the door to clear the tire, maybe. This is the longer arm, just giving it a shot of that metallic blue. I picked that up from a subscriber, really, really appreciate that. Not cheap, but necessary. Well, uh, three bolts, that's not too bad. Uh, I don't know how to get this rail cover off. Let's go fix this up a little bit, though. Remove some of that peeling chrome. Chroming in a can. Look at that, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was attached with some screws on each end, but some evil son of a bitch used flathead screws and nuts in a few spots along the top edge. You bastard. I was able to get one of them out. The rest of them are rusted solid, but that allows us to pull it up and pull those two bolts out, pull these three bolts out, and hopefully it just bolts right on. Man, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Man, that's never, ever, ever gonna happen. You know, I have no idea what happens when I unbolt this. That was a body shim. That was another body shim. A rolly dealy in here. That's a technical term, by the way. Try to stretch the spring over here. It's just like a brake spring, except for like a lot more. Oh. Well, let's get this right on. Realign the hinge, which means get the door shut where we want her and crank her down, I believe. It's installed now. Still gotta put the stop in, but hey, 
to open the door again. Hooray! Well, you're back. Oh, hi. So you're going to clean this, huh? <laughs> and, and you. In it. You guys have fun with that. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget the shag brush now. You can <laughs> yeah, the very brush. official shag brush. Uh, I'll take those shocks, actually. I'll probably put those on. Oh, yeah, that's right. Actually, I better do these first. It needs at least one of these pretty badly. And, uh, well, I'm going to guess it probably needs hoses. All the usual crap that things need. How the hell are you supposed to put a belt on this thing? Would you look at that? They put a tensioner on the front so that you can take off the AC belt without loosening the back bolt. You know, they were so thoughtful, I say, until I realized that you need a special tool to tighten that. How goes it? Fantastic, Wow, we what say, the hell uh... is that? <laughs> Pile of bloody rags. No, just waxy. Oh, spider. Oh, Alright, we're no. safe now. God, Jesus help me. Oh, what the hell? Is that? Dale! Yeah. <laughs> this? What's that? Ha! Oh, yeah, we gotta put that back on the device <laughs> for sure. Structure and manual. For a chair. Wax with the rag in it and everything. Wow, I didn't do this thing any favors, did it? <laughs> See this tensioner pulley right here? Oh, yeah. It has a nut or a bolt on the top. You loosen two bolts on the bottom. Then you loosen this top bolt. And then loosens the belt for you so you can actually change the belts. That's the kind of engineering they really don't do anymore. Still got to tighten the power steering belt, but I think I got the belts on and tight. The AC belt's done. And I put the alternator belt on. I ran a shorter belt and took off the pulley for the smog puff. I'd show you, but you can't hardly even see it. Oh, here it is. That's for the smog pump, being a California van. Uh, not only does it have California dreams, but also, it has a smog pump, so that's good for a couple horsepower. Well, I got some new radiator hoses for it, and I don't know if it needs them or not, but I don't know, on old stuff, I always like to take that extra little precaution of needlessly replacing things that don't need it. And conveniently, you can place an entire five gallon bucket underneath this thing. Does it have a petcock? Could I just drain the radiator? I could do it the smart way or the fast way, JD. What should I do? The fast way. Okay. Oh, God, no! Shit! Oh. <laughs> Easy, just like I said. <laughs> Let it all out, bam. Be a good bit. Oh, yeah, there you go. Pretty sure those seats are in really good shape under there. We should just take those off. I mean, I, I know the diamond pleat is cool. Not really. But, uh, yeah. They're like perfect under there, I believe. Seriously, yeah. Van Drift. Looks like metal shards. The Van Drift. I, mean, I don't even know what that is. Let me be the determiner of what what? Oh, that. That. Feel it. <laughs> That's With fiber. your finger. Fiberglass. Sure? Yeah. Yeah. It's fiberglass insulation. Oh. Pouring out of there, it's probably. That's what we were breathing in, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you find? Mm -hmm. And another brush. Oh, lots I mean, of brushes. This, yeah, <laughs> on top of the. As well as. Certified shag brush. Look at that. That is rare polyester beast hide right there. <laughs> oh, and then grandpa's tape. Oh, yeah. Grandpa's tape in here. VHS compact. I ordered a uh, adapter and I have a VHS player. We will see what's on Grandpa's tape. <laughs> <So scary. laughs> I had to cut the old hose off and uh, look how de degraded that thing was inside. Just falling apart. Uh, it actually looked fine on the outside, but no doubt that would have bit us right in the butt. Pull this big old donkey out of here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Armor Mark made in Malaysia. Oh, only the finest. Let's install our new giant donkey hose here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fill this guy up with coolant. Then we're gonna fire it up with the cap off of it and burp the system. We'll let it run until the thermostat opens and then we'll pop it back off. Well, it's perfectly safe to assume that this is totally fine and needs no further attention at all. I would like to throw the hijackers on the rear at least before that show tomorrow, so I might do that. Hello. <laughs> Those are Gabriel hijackers. 
This is the airline kit. If you don't know, somehow, these are air shocks, and you inflate them, and they extend, and that makes the rear end of the van go up, gives it the rake that we need for that 70s look. So whenever you push them up, they don't rebound. They should rebound pretty quickly. She's junk. These are like grandpa shocks, okay? People, there's a difference between like an 80s conversion van and a shagging wagon, all right? You gotta have the rake, you gotta have the slots, you gotta have the raised white letters, you gotta have the shag. This isn't grandpa's conversion van or creepy Uncle Chester's. Look at that thing. It's that spindly ass bolt there. It goes all the way through the frame rail. They built these sons of bitches, that's for sure. You gotta make sure the dangle is angled correctly. Yeah, see, now the dangle is uh, still in the wrong spot. And uh, that's exactly what I intended it to be. Alright, we'll bolt these suckers up, run some airlines, and, and uh, hijack this bitch. So conveniently, the Gabriel kit is actually a superior kit to the Monroe. And that is for one reason. It has an actual T for the Schrader valve instead of the Monroe kit, which has that stupid little extra dangle on it, and they leak really bad. Basically, you just have a Schrader valve, and then there's little O-rings. There we go, and see, they already double up the O-rings. You always want to double those things up. Don't run just one. Fire these up, Let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing. The van is quite heavy. I guess that's it. They definitely have air in them. They don't take any more than that. It's only 120 PSI. I kind of feel ripped off. The fan is just so fat back here because it's furnished. I guess it just won't go any higher, but at least it's level now. That's better than it was. Ready to go do van things? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. I can't see out the window of this thing, so I guess we'll give her a wash. I definitely smell some burning oil. I think we got a valve cover or something leaking. But, you know, these are all things to figure out. It's the first time we've really driven it other than the complete failed attempt the first time. Can't forget these. Is that gonna clear the book? They're kind of inconvenient. I'm not not totally gonna lie. They know you're dealing with a real man. Keep some pliers around. It leaks a little. A little. Not bad. Extra cleaner. Yeah. It drives really good. fast that actually is, but it feels about 70-ish. The car's so good, we got a little fuel leak or something down there, but I mean, it's just gas. Thankfully, there's no sparks in there, you know? Anyway. This is the new Flying H drag strip in Odessa, Missouri. They've been building out here because there's shops going up. Uh, they just made, I mean, literally just built this dragster, fresh pavement. Uh, so this is their grand opening. I wanted to come out here and say hi. And if you're in Missouri and you want to go run your car on a track, just know we've got a place to do it now. While other tracks have been closing all over the country, these guys have the balls to open a new one. They've fought every county and city regulation to get this done. And if you're in Missouri, you need to come out here and race when they open. Oh, they're walking the track. I want to walk the track. Can we walk the track? Yeah, let's walk the track. Okay. You want to race? Yeah. Okay. You have to look at I'm in flip flops. Okay, this is where I die. I believe it is time to put the van to the ultimate test. Will it haul the LTD? And I'm going to go trade that for a Mustang too. But, you know. I figured this is a good test. Is this thing usable? Probably not, but we'll see. It's a short little jaunt. It's not bad. You know, the last thing on the trailer was the van. So <laughs> everything's come full circle now. Bon voyage. You got like half a cheek off over here. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, van! Van, stop! <laughs> Maybe we need these. I don't know. Maybe. It's already squatted. There's nothing on it. Why don't you put the new shocks in the back? Yeah, that way we could blow them out. Yeah. We'll 
put these lights on here so that we can, you know, just pretend that we tried. Yeah. And away we go. I'm on the wood right now, in first. Oh, 30. Oh, yeah. All right. So it's slow, but I can live with slow. <laughs> oh, my God. We might need a little more tongue weight on this thing. I don't know how, but it's a little, little wobbly. I'm pleased to know that it's running ice cold. In fact, it's almost like that doesn't even work. All right, here's the twisty, windy roads here. Remember that funny time when I was like, well, at least it probably won't be twisty turvy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's here. Oh, okay. <laughs> This is probably the last time. Ah, uh, nothing like a peaceful, scenic drive that I can really enjoy because I'm not white knuckling the purple metallic steering wheel. Not at all. No, no, no. Everything's great. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why is that bad at me? I'm not speeding. Traded the LTD Roadster for this 77? 78. 78 Mustang 2 with T tops and no floors. It also has the, the, the floors are as breezy as the top. So, uh, what am I gonna do with it? I don't have any idea, but we'll take her home. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Well, the brakes are gone now. Excellent. I can't. I can't get out. All right. Yeah. Easy. This pulls the Mustang 2 a lot better than the LTD, go figure. So we can use this to pull things, just not heavy things. The you know, rotten Mustang 2's, perfect. The van has completed its mission, flawlessly I might add. Other than the flaws, not bad. Well, I guess I'll unload this Mustang. What the hell am I going to do with it? I don't know. What should I do with Farrah Fawcett's Cobra 2? We return to the van and the dog. So we bought lots of stuff. <laughs> lots of wood and stuff to try to fix this. Uh, mostly that and this. And we got some trim to maybe replace some of this if we need to. And I also got some sheeting to replace the uh, door panels that are falling apart as well as the front door panels. But, I think I'm going to put shocks on it because it needs those real bad. And then I'm probably going to cut you loose in here, huh? Uh -huh. See what it looks like underneath? Some, not all of it? Do we don't want to open <laughs> no. the whole... Yeah, we don't want to open the whole can of worms. Just try open the corner of it. Right, you're going to pop the top on it and crack it a little bit. Throw these mystery Rock Auto shocks on the front because it needs them real bad. <laughs> Ew. Is it's it, not as bad as I thought. It's though. not? What no. the kind of insulation is it? Is it just like that it's just pads of it that's glued up oh okay right it's just asbestos it's just just a little asbestos oh you just rip them out huh? oh i know i'm scared too then 
All right, fine. Yeah, oh, God, I guess those it is are, Pole Barn Garage. <laughs> they're just threaded nails is all they are. Have fun getting mesothelioma. <laughs> I'll be under here. <laughs> this shock was loose. That was probably our clunking in the front end, actually, is the bushing in that shock. That's what I would tell myself, anyway. This shock is frozen solid. I wonder why it rode so weird. Also, it's full of... It's like a maraca. <laughs> <laughs> it's mud dauberness. What is wrong? Huh. Well, hey, you know, that actually looks better already. As soon as that stretched, it'll be fine, because the foam itself, except for this little edge, is still tight. very stuck up there. See? Yeah. No, it pulls it nice, it nice and like tight that. again. Nice and tight. Well, here's this. If you huff this, you'll see lots of colors. Fun. Are you duct taping the ceiling back into place? <laughs> no. You know what? I just can't wait to see the final result. <laughs> you won't see any of this crap under it. It'll no, be No, you know, you're right. It'll, it'll hold. That's so much better. Yeah. Ooh, oh. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Yeah, there, there's a big hole right there, actually. Oh, so really? I just picked the perfect spot, huh? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> this will hold it for sure. I don't mess around. When I was a kid in school, I always got in trouble for using too much glue. I was kind of a rebel, you know? I thought I was eating too much glue. Well, that too. <laughs> we'll just use my old broken camera tripod. <laughs> To hold this up, maybe it sticks to something. <laughs> or it just takes the rest of the fabric down. We'll see. Possibly. <laughs> Very possible. All right. Here's what we're going to have to do to fix that is I think we are going to screw to the sunroof frame. Okay. We have that one by two. Yeah. We'll cut a piece of the one by two, put it up here. They've got something. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> well. Oh. We'll just fix that part too. Yeah, I guess we'll just fix well, that also. Well, I mean, taking the Gorilla Tape off. It. My only goal here is oh. to make sure that this, I want the CB mounted back up here. Okay. So, we and just got to keep the fiberglass to a minimum. That as well. Yeah. In our long. Breath. Really see any. Ooh. Oh. I know. I know. Things have got to get worse before they get better, though. Yeah. So, this stuff is not doing anything at all right now. Sorry. <laughs> You're right. Probably try to stick it up under the roof and put that one by two across. Get it nice and tied up here. Mm -hmm. We can mount the CB mount to it through the shag. Try to hold some of that back together. Then we're just gonna have to camo it with some trim or, or something. But we could use the frame of the sunroof to trim out. And shoot this back up there with a screw, right? Mm -hmm. Drive all screws. Yeah. And uh, it's got Let's a plank ran out. along there, so that'll pull right. that right back up. Uh, oh, yep, you found got it. it. Nice. Yeah. Well, there's that much held back up. That's real solid now. Hell yeah. Like cool. It. All right, I'm gonna finish this shock up and then I'll start cutting some wood. Hey, our shocks are on and uh, it actually moves now. It didn't move at all before. So that's cool. It'll probably ride way better. <laughs> um, yeah, well, 20. That's it. Perfect. Very official. 20 units. Put it on the back side. Yeah. Huh? It's good. I'm just gonna shoot a drywall screw in it. <laughs> and we'll see. And that works. Good enough for the girls I go with, no offense. Oh, fuck. That's what you get for that. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess I should have seen that one coming. Oh. <laughs> yep. That's fixed. Yep. Perfect. Never happened. <laughs> Are we ready to do something with this? I, I could go so. ahead and screw this up and it'll hold. Yeah, go for it. I'll just trim out the rest of this stuff. Sweet. Shoot yeah, man. Cool. And that, that did actually help us out here a lot because you could actually trim this back now. Yeah. I think we're good, man. Hooked up, we can talk to other vans. Oh my god, all the vans are going to be so jealous. I can't imagine what they're going to have to say. I'm going to measure this for some trim, I think. Well, we picked up this trim, and we'll go ahead and stain it and everything, but we got to get her cut to fit. 
this will replace all that cheap veneer that was on the roof. This is actual wood trim. Mm -hmm. yes, man, a bit fancy. That's one of my classic ultra straight cuts right there. See that? That's why I always cut them with about three inches extra. You know, that's a it's an acute 30 degree angle on that one. Poorly cut or not, it fits in here pretty well. Now, of course, we'll stain it and you know make it all pretty and stuff. But uh, I'm gonna cut that. I'm gonna cut this one. Stick it in here. We'll get us a measurement for us just to butt one up against each side of it and uh, see what that does. Two pieces of trim. Now we're just gonna take a measurement from here to that one and uh, cut two of those. Then we'll go get her all stained. And then we have the little buttons to cover up the gaps in them. I think we just leave the rest of it alone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right up in place there. Now we're of course gonna have to liquid nails the shit out of all this <laughs> to make it fit, but I think it'll be okay. We've gone with the mahogany all in one min wax. Yes. Well that's definitely gonna take a couple of coats in it. Yeah. Probably have to wipe these off. They kinda just hold it. Put up with a little foam brush. Ooh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll let it soak for a minute. It looks wonderful. They've obviously made some door panels here. They're pretty cool, but you know, they're just rough. So I bought some underlayment up here, and I'm pretty sure we can make something similar. I'm gonna pull that off. We'll use it as a template to make a new one. Let's see what's hidden in the doors. Let's see if the old Jesus fan made some trips across the border. Who uses square headed screws and what is wrong with them? Really good spade connectors, let me tell you. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, huh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. Wow. Yeah, that looks a lot better without this. <laughs> yeah. Got her laid out here. Just gonna line up this one corner. It's got a nice 90 on it. We're gonna mark the speaker hole and the window crank holes. Like that. Like that. Like that. We get this curve right down here. We have to kind of make it up as we go for some of this, but something like that, probably. There should be something like that. Yeah, that's like the best tool in the world, the window crank remover. Oh, I see now. Yeah. I got it. There you go. There it is. Yep. Perfect. pilot hole for our speaker here. You know, I should have been a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. I figure the passenger side is probably the same as the driver's side, so we'll just make another. And there's another door panel in here. You want to do the honors? Yeah, it like works. Charm. Pretty yeah. good. Oh, does it need trimmed? Yeah, just right here. Rounded a that bit. off. Okay, yeah. I can do that. Let me see how much. I'm gonna rough these door panels up with a little 180, just to make sure we get an even color on them. Excellent. Kind of rounded the corners too, make it a little less sharp. Those look fantastic. So I think they're the same color now, so they should theoretically match. All the varnishes. Yeah. yeah so now you're talking my language. Oh my gosh. I just right. pour it onto it and then right. mop it around. All right. Works for me. <laughs> Jesse finished these out. Looks That's very so nice. Man, the, the van is going to be so, so nice. classy. This is going to be the toughest one, I think, but I don't know how wide this is. But I would love to use this as a template as well, uh, just because of all the like, corners and stuff it has. But obviously, it desperately needs replaced. <laughs> So, we'll zip that off, then take out 400 square-headed screws. All right, yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, good. No, this is, oh. yeah, there we go. Ah, now we can see the boogie band's exposed panel van roots. See, look at this, it's like new. Oh, man, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we can get that out of this. It's not quite four feet wide, is it? All right. 
the lock. And we got to take about, looks like a quarter of an inch or so off of this side. test fit before we commit too hard to this. It fits right on my leg. Uh, okay. There. That's it. Oh. Does that well, fix with that? that? Yeah, you don't need... Yeah, that's okay. perfect now. Yeah, so the, it, it was this holding us up right oh. here. Okay, I gotta trim that open just a little more. Look at the fanciness. Take you all the way out. Oh my. <laughs> Man, it's just class now. You know, that was just veneer paneling in it before. We've actually upgraded it. Real particle board, not fake. <laughs> we have these crappy JVC speakers on hand, so we'll go ahead and replace those while we're in here. And we'll just self tapper it onto it and huzzah, a door panel. Maybe we can use the door handles to kind of position us. really well actually start screwing <laughs> in the van self tapper into this one and we'll install the speaker and, and then I'll install it with self tappers suck it down into place there we go Sliding door panel looks great. It's nice and cozy in here. Very homey. <laughs> Still got to put the trim up there. With our new speakers, our factory 8 track tries to do something. Let's try some mama and papa's. Let's try it. I can feel it running. They ain't got no sound. That selector doesn't seem to. <laughs> None of this seems to change program either. But we're going to get back on the van here and we're going to be putting some trim in it now. It's dry. However, I have a big announcement to make. I have merch. I've had merch, but it's been very poor quality and I haven't pushed it. This is good stuff here. It's printed by a small family-owned company in Iowa uh, and well you know they all watch the channel and they're friends of mine built a website shirtstampmerch.com right right here somewhere in here and we have koozies and shirts different shirts than this even I mean like there's several different colors and stuff hoodies long sleeve shirts things like that but they're good quality there's you know that's the thing that's the difference uh, before I was doing that print to order thing and they're just like, man, like peel and stick, like just not worth it. And these are cheaper. I mean, I think the cheapest shirt on shirtstampmerch.com, 15 bucks. I mean, that was one thing I, I impressed upon them is that I want it to be as cheap, as affordable as possible. Uh, whether it cuts into my margin or not, doesn't matter to me. I want you guys to have cheap shirts, right? Don't we all? So that's like Walmart prices and you get to support the channel, you know? So... Anyway, check them out, and uh, let's try to glue this in here. So, this is going to look real nice, but uh, while the liquid nails dries, we need to be able to hold it up like that, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's, uh, let me go try a screw, because there is wood under here. Is it any good? No. Mm -hmm. Lots of this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If it'll just stay like that, I think we'll be all right. The more the merrier. Mm. Uh huh. Dalton, what was your plan here, you idiot? Oh, yes. There we go. That was my plan. <laughs> of course it was. I am a professional. Anyway, let's. Yes, 
<laughs> God, <laughs> my genius amazes myself. In my infinite wisdom, I've <laughs> seemed to have not made a mistake, because, you know, I don't make mistakes, but uh, I made a happy little accident where I have cut these just a little too long because I put the trim in the wrong spot, but <laughs> don't question my genius. Okay, J.D.? Okay, I won't. <laughs> we'll put a D on that for driver's side. <laughs> That's how smart and prepared I am for all things. See, that was really close. You see how close that was? It almost fit. Actually, it's probably someone else's fault. I'm going to blame you. <laughs> yes. Oh, my. Yes. Yes. See, I would got those just to cover up the, the corners. Now, I definitely don't know how to attach those. I'm going to try to glue these buttons up here and see if it'll just tack enough to hold them. Because uh, I don't really have any good way to attach these mechanically. I mean, if it stays there, that would be fine, right? I like the buttons on there. Yeah, they look good. Hmm. Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay, well, we'll see if they stay there, I guess. The trim looks great. I mean, it has, it's a huge improvement. Uh, I think the uh, next step is to make sure that that doesn't rot again, and I have a very special solution for that. <laughs> We're going to fix the vent with Flex Seal! Yeah! No sponsor, because they didn't want to work with me, but I still like their product. Yeah. Yeah. Flex Seal. You go underwater. That's right. Just like that screen door boat. The things that I wanted to do were too questionable for our legal department, but that guy can go out on the lake in a screen door bottom boat. Go ahead and repair the sunroof, too. We got one last thing. Grandpa's tape. <laughs> you wanna go watch it? Yeah. Oh God. So I bought a VHS adapter thingy here. It's supposed to work. And I've been a long, long time since I've used one of these. these children, let me know. Say hi to Grandpa and Grandma. And the van. What about the van? This has got to be the weirdest thing I've ever found in a car. Okay, there's Robbie. Let me see your sign, Robbie. Robert. All right, Robbie, Ellie, or Jules, if you're out there, I'll mail this to you, give you your, your tape back. Somebody's missing this, you know? Oh, that must be their new van. That's a 96. They replaced the shagging wagon with that? Come on! Okay, so I just backed it all the way back. Or I want to make sure. Uh, all the way rewound. That looks all the way rewound, I think. I mean, it's full of tape. We got a, a hint of a van, and I, I want to see our van. Right here. Right here. There's some cars. Where's the van? <gasps> oh, that's the minivan. I forgot we need to install this. <laughs> now for the final touch. The disc. Oh yeah. 
Well, it'll make sparkly things eventually. Perfect, though. Now it's a boogie van. And I just realized I forgot to make a table for it, but... Well, we'll do that next time on Pole Barn Garage, so I'm all out of time for this episode. Make sure you check out the new merch site. Make sure you are on the Instagram, the Facebook, you're liking, subscribing. Thank you guys for watching, as always. You want to see more of the van? Let me know. I think we probably got one more episode of side pipes and a few knick-knack things. But we made some huge progress this time. So, you let me know. Jesse's working on something to recover that futon with. I can't wait to see what she comes up with for that. We'll see you guys next time on Pole Barn Garage. Uh, every Friday, for the most part. Except for we'll be in Tucson at the Duct Tape Drags, September 29th and 30th. There might be like, I don't know, there could be maybe even a week where I don't upload. But don't worry, I'm alive. Probably. So, you know, just uh, stay tuned and ring the bell. If you ring the bell, then you always get told. Otherwise, it's kind of up to YouTube and we all know who that is. So, see ya.